Welcome to Trading Lounge and the European Indices for Tuesday, August the 24th. Starting on the DAX here to get a bit of perspective on the weekly chart. And uh, as I've been mentioning here, this is my yardstick here for the length of wave one and put it on the low of wave two. We normally find wave three being longer than wave one and we're not there yet. And also too, we can see with a bit of logical sense here, we've got one and two here and one, two, three, four, five, the third wave, fourth wave here. And the fifth wave is just too small, isn't it? I mean, just look, the perspective of it is too small. So we would expect it to be further up uh, here for all of that. So um, that's what I'm looking for at um, at this stage. Let's go in and have a look at this because it has been a little bit tricky in this move through uh, here. So let's just go in and start to work it. So from this wave four here, we'll just pick it up from here. So we've got, um, well, we had it labeled as wave one here and two here, and we thought that we may be topping. So that wave three was sitting there, and then we've had wave four sitting here. But the wave fours overlap wave one, so that's just not the case. So we can put that back up there, and we can put, we could move that and put that back up there. So we could look at it as one and two here, and then one and two. That would be logical. But there is a count in here as one and two and three and four and five here. So I'm going to be looking at, I'm going to hold both counts here. So at this level in the daily chart, we'll just uh, leave this count because we want to be up at 1650 somewhere for this, right? So let's just leave this count the other counts we're going to have a look at will be with wave one here and wave two here so it's not going to make a lot of difference at this stage and as this particular trend here moves out and uh, starts unfolding further we'll be able to reconcile what the correct wave structure is uh in in you know in in, in this in, in all of this and we can compare this to the the FTSE and the stock 50 and also to the to the s p etc so let's just go in a little bit further and have a look at uh, what we've been doing. So this is a this is how we had it before, and uh, with the FTSE and the stock fifty, we've got that overlap there. So we can't have it like that. So um, I'm going to move that out of the way there, and move that out of the way, and we can come back to uh, to this situation. So we could have it as well. Let's just. We'll work this count in this way, shall we? So this could be uh, three, four, and five coming into that space. We'll have one count like this, and we can have the other counts, uh, the other count slightly different. And it's okay to work two counts. I mean, I mean, the good thing about it is really they're both to the upside. You know, that's the important point uh, with this. So when they do overlap here, it normally tells you it's normally a one and two and one and two, but it could also be just wave one on here, as we'll see on the hourly chart in this case. So we had wave one there, so we'd need to put, well, we don't need to do anything there. So we just, uh, we'll just remove that and remove that. And I'll just leave these two as they stand here at the moment. And we need to understand this. And this is quite interesting really here. And we'll have a look at the tick chart and we can have a look at the big account in the tick chart with this as wave one up here and wave two and how that's being counted, because that is important to understand. The important thing here though also is that it's very clear that this is a corrective pattern as an ABC. We didn't get five waves down here. We didn't get that extra wave down here. Now, the next interesting point here is that, well, this could also be an A and a B and a C wave up to this point. And this is what we were discussing yesterday. So technically, so there was five waves in this move here. So technically, if if the market moves above this high here, then uh, we can rule out the ABC pattern. And we think that's going to be the case based on what we can see with the uh, US market. So I'll put Humpty Dumpty back together again over here and we'll leave that there. And then we really need to understand this here. So once again, we've got the same situation here as well, because we could look at this as wave one and two here. And then we could look at that as wave three because it's nice and strong, isn't it? But the fact is, as it comes down and overlaps wave one, and as it comes down, it's actually quite sharp, isn't it? So it's more like a wave 
two rather than a wave four. So I think that we need to look at this as wave one and two and one and two here. But technically, don't forget, when it takes out that top, then it confirms that this is not an ABC correction because until it does that, it's liable to come down further into a flat correction. So a three, three, five structure. I don't think that's the case, and this is building uh, quite nicely here. So what I want to talk about here is risk on long trades here. We talked about them yesterday as well. Now, you may already be long here because from yesterday because we the way that we talked about it. But this um, level here, the 15,900, that's the level that we're working with, and it carries a bit of weight. Obviously, it's been affected here, and you can see it's a nice balance line through here. Um, so gaining support over here this time around would be a very solid positive move to the upside. So I'm thinking that what we could do, just as a trade suggestion, is once the 900 here becomes the support, and we will see the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, and then the ABC correction here. And if you're good enough, you'll get that second high. But if you can't find that, the top high here is fine. And then we'll also look for the same pattern here, the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, the ABC pattern, which which is just my draft here, which I use the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, uh, the ABC correction, and then coming over here. Now, this bigger pattern that's here can all be tied up in here as well, if you've got a keen eye. So the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, the ABC correction, and then up again. So uh, you can refine that there. The other side to this though is that the market may not come back below this level here so you just need to be aware of that and it's this high that's important and then this high that's important so you need to go long from these ones so it's only sort of half a structure at that point and it will look like this so that entry if you can get it and then this one here we'll go to the tick chart just uh, just bring in everything. So this is how it could count to the upside. So before it didn't look very good in counting at that in that particular way of having wave one here. But when you look at it like this as wave one and two here, five waves up for three, an A and a B and a C for four here, and one and two and three and four and five, well, it doesn't look too bad. It's a bit scruffy, but it's okay. Um, and then wave five or five of one, an A and a B and a C for wave two. And then we start building a case for the move up here. Now, yesterday we talked about this here. We looked at this being uh, wave one and two here. We can also, this is pulled back quite sharply here. We could label this one and two in here and probably one and two in here and looking to build that to the upside there somehow like that and three and four probably across there and five going up there that will leave us with wave three four I'll probably have to adjust this in terms of um, a structure I don't know if that should be green wave one it could be but for this purpose it's okay I just want to have a look in here why I'm So yesterday we pulled that apart and this one here would have to play out as one and or well, is that the low? Either way, we'll look at it as one, two. I'm thinking one and two and three and four and five here for this, then the A, the B wave here, but it's not a very nice C wave. So it's a bit of a conundrum. that one I haven't really had time to focus on it but the third wave here plays out nicely and the fourth wave here plays out nicely and then the fifth wave here plays out nicely and then we've got five waves down here and then a correction and then another five over here so problem sort of half solved so we could look at that as wave one and two uh, we need to count this to the upside it looks like we've got this wave one here already in play but please go and check my work you know i get things wrong just as much as you do all we're doing is really just sharing ideas and have to move reasonably quick so we should see this continue there should be a four five in here somewhere for that and uh so the sixteen thousand, we're going to see you know uh a classic trading levels pattern here with 
yada, 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 some sort of thing like this. So if you're a bit patient, you get to see it, you know. If you're a short-term trader, you get to hear it, you get out, and you wait for that vibration to occur, and then you start getting back in. It takes everything. Everything looks simple, but, you know, to get from simple, you have to go through complex. So that's the DAX. Let's sign off on that, but let's also just uh, go back to the daily chart for a moment just to digest what we've been looking at here for a moment so we've got wave four here and we can look at this as wave one and two here and then wave one and two here i think it's a better fit with wave one here myself but we'll play we're playing two counts and it won't make a big won't make a big difference all said and done though we are looking for a move that's going to take us up into uh into the 16,500 now there will be a dance across the 16 uh, thousand, but the wind has partly taken uh, out of the sails, so to speak. Uh, so there should be a small vibration here, classic trading levels pattern, which you can take advantage of uh, once resistance becomes support. And that pattern, the classic trading level pattern, helps helps you see how it migrates from one side of the fence to the other and then secures itself there. So this is the FTSE here. Code's always up here in the time period is there as well so in this case here i've got wave three and four here and i'm looking for one and two and three and four and five so we could do the same thing again as one and two and one and two here but yeah so let's just cruise into this and we'll have probably the old account there as well which is here because i just like to go back over my mistakes and looking at this as one and two and three and four here so we've been looking at that so i don't need to go back there because we've looked at that two or three times um so we've chewed that over enough so we've either got wave one up here um or we can look at this as wave one here i just want to be a little bit open-minded you may have a an opinion about that now once again here too we've got three waves here so this is corrective it does mean that it could become more corrective over here and that that's why um, this is important. We're at the 50-60% retracement level from the top there. I think that's right. Or is that on just on one leg? It's pretty close either way. Yeah, not quite there, but um, we can just raise the bar somewhat just about there. So we're in the box. That's the main thing. Now, uh, of course, we've got one, two, three here. So that means if it was going to be an ABC, that's where it would fail from. And that's where it would move down from at that point, because it's in three waves there. So if it takes out the top, that means that, um, that the market's bullish from that point. Because otherwise it would be a flat correction where it would have three, three and five coming down and then going up. So taking out that top is the safe trade on the one hour chart. Here, I've got it as wave one over here, an A and a B and a C, because it is quite nice and sharp. It is a three, it is a five, three, five structure. Once again, we need to take out that top to be safe. Now you could move in earlier, and if I was going to move in, which I'm not, I've got my own things going on, which, but this is the level here. So when we're talking about 7,100, that's a minor level, and then 200 and 300, they're all minor levels of 7,000, and one, two, and three here make up minor group one. So when we're talking about minor group, minor level one here, we can also look at um, one, two, and three, so 10, 20 and 30 in this case. So if you get a tested support on top of 7130, the top of subgroup one, then um, we'll be leaving the 100 and we'll be heading up to the 50 at that point. So you could look to build a position here. This looks like a little leg starting here that's, that's not quite finished. It looks like one and two in here and going up for three. So there'll be a four and a five coming up here. And then there'll be a little ABC pattern here, probably exaggerating it. Um, Whoops, the daisy. So you can go on that high. We can also put this over here on that second high there. Anyway, you know the you know the drill. And then we'll be up from that point. So then we can look at this as one and two and one and two, or one and two and three and four and five. So we'll see how that plays out. I also want to have a look at the stock 50 today that's in the same 
situation as well here. So we'll just so we've got well we've got one here and two here. In this case, it's interesting here because this is one of the few markets that actually extended out into the third wave. I don't know if um, I mean having the third wave longer than wave one. I mean the S and P's not there yet. The DAX is not there yet. So you know I wonder. Uh, still, it's the top fifty stocks, isn't it? So. Um, yeah, so this is the count. It's all pretty simple. The only adjustment that I could see in all of this is having, instead of that wave four, having a blue wave four sitting there. And that would relate to putting wave one here and wave two uh, here for that. But I won't go there with that. But I'll just sort of share that because I got that sitting there. Um, so I'll leave that there for the time being. We've got the same situation here again as well, where we had that nice move up here and then the correction, then another move and a fall back here. This also happened in Australia where I am. The banks created this situation. So it's probably the finance uh, finance uh, stocks in, uh, in Europe that have done the same thing as well. They're all looking at each other. They're all connected. So how do we count this? You know, do we look at this as the same thing? Do we look at wave one up here and wave two and so on? Or do we look at this as wave one and two? So we'll just keep an eye on all of this, but I think it's okay to, uh, you know, consider different counts. And at some point along the line, they, they will uh, reveal themselves. So I'm not sure what we've where I've been here on the stock 50. I don't really pay it a lot of attention. So we went through the same thing. So this was my mistake of having wave one here and two here and three here, and then the four coming back and overlapping that. So we've rubbed that in enough. So that's enough <laughs> for that. Um, so yeah, they can all move up higher here. So the same thing applies here as well. So we'll, we'll need to work this and, um, just want to have a look on the one hour chart to see that's no good. That's just rehashing the same idea that we had a look at yesterday. And I'll just have a look at the tick chart. Just want to see if I've done anything here. Okay. So yeah, that would play out like that. That's um, a bit different here. This is quite a long fifth wave here for this, isn't it? As wave one and two and three and four and going up for five here. Uh, doesn't look as good, but we'll just um, keep an eye on it. You might be able to see something that I'm, I'm missing and that wouldn't be difficult to do, especially if it's your market and you're, you know, you've got money in it. You notice all the little idiosyncrasies and that's what you really do need to know, you know. It's like using the indicators. It's not so much the indicators. It's all the little tiny idiosyncrasies that that you notice that the subtleties, you know, that, that play out. That That's what makes, that separates the winners from the losers. Okay, so quite a nice structure pushing out through here, I have to say. So, um, yeah, I think we might... Mm. Once again, I'm not sure if we should label that wave one or this, which degree of structure we should label this. Anyway, we'll mull that over, but we'll be pushing higher. That's the main gist with all of this. So it's probably one and two and three and four and five to here. So I think I'll just go this way with this. And then this would be here and there. We still need a long th longer third wave up there for that. Okay, we've got these guys. That will be good. We'll see how it plays out a little bit more and, and I'll, I'll know what's what. I just got to see a bit more of the personality of structure, but it doesn't really matter. We're, we're, um, we're risk on and, uh, kicking goals. Just keep these out of the way for a moment, but it will look something like this. Okay. We might need to change it a bit, but, um, I mean, the interesting thing here, it's pushed, you can go long because we've pushed past the five wave structure here. So that's one, two, three, four, five for one. 
little A, B, C in here, that's one and two here, that's one and two and three and four and five, the third wave. So this is all of the fifth wave. So yeah, this is um, going, <clears throat> this is going to the upside. So I'll just leave it at that. That's enough waffling on. I want to keep the videos uh, as short as possible. Alrighty. Um, yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers.